Welcome to Katrina's Creations. Um, I am going to be doing a series of basic knitting stitches with a project that we're going to complete along with that. Um, I got to thinking what was the fun of learning any new stitches if you couldn't apply it and have a finished project while you're practicing these stitches. So we are going to make this. This is called the Basic Stitches Cowl. It is available for free on Ravelry. Uh, if you're an experienced knitter and you don't need to see the basic stitches, then you can just download the pattern and, and have fun making it. Um, but if you are a beginning knitter and you want to learn some stitches that are commonly used stitches, then this is a series for you. And in doing this cowl, I wanted to try to use materials that were readily available if you didn't have a local yarn store, things that you could find at at like a Joann's or a Hobby Lobby or Walmart, something like that, that would just carry your generic types of yarn. So the cowl is made with worsted weight yarn, which is like your Red Heart brand. You can make it with, with um, like wool fibers. You can make this cowl with any kind of fiber you would like. It just needs to be a worsted weight. Now yarn comes in different weights. So it comes in lace weight, which is the thinnest, and it comes in fingering. You'll see it listed as fingering. You'll see sock, sport, or baby weight. They're very, very similar. I don't have all of those types to show you, but the general, they are generally this thick, and you can see it in comparison with lace, the difference. Then there is a DK weight which is just a little bit thicker than your fingering, as you can see. And then there is worsted weight, which, as you can see, is slightly thicker. The gold is the worsted weight. is slightly thicker than the DK. There are heavier yarns beyond the worsted weight. There is chunky, which is like your, your rug yarns. And then there is super chunky, which is... Um, about as, as thick as my finger. It's very, um, very big and chunky. The, the general rule of thumb is that the thinner the yarn, the smaller size needles that you're going to use. Now, in order to make this cowl, you will need a worsted weight yarn of any kind of fiber content. You can make it all in acrylic yarn, which would be like your Red Heart brand or your Lion brand yarns. You can make it in wools. You can make it in a superwash. This one is made in uh, Malabrigo Rio Superwash Merino Wool. Um, you will need at least 200 yards. My ball of yarn that I used had 210 and this is all that's left. So I used almost exactly 200 yards. So most worsted weight skeins are more than 200 yards. So one skein of yarn is all you will, you will need. You will need a set of knitting needles. It can be straight needles, it can be circular needles, it really doesn't matter, but they need to be a US size 8 in order to make them. And I believe that's a 5.5 millimeter. I think that's 5.5 millimeter. Um, it's either a 5 or a 5.5, but it's a US 8. These, um, I don't like the, they're very brittle and curled here. These are cheap ones, but I wanted to to show these because these are the, one of my oldest set of circular needles that I have and I know that they are readily available in the stores that I mentioned. These are boy needles which is B-O-Y-E. Um, it's a very common one. They're ones you can pick up in any, any of those stores. You will also need a tapestry needle or darning needle something that has a large eye on the end that's that's large enough for you to be able to get the yarn through. Um, and this is going to be at the end of your project for um, seaming it together in the back when you're finished. You will need a crochet hook, um, not a huge one, but just your average size. This one is a size G, but it could be a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. What you're going to do use with this is to weave in your ends at the end. And of course you'll need a pair of scissors at the very end. You won't need it before then. 
you will need something to use as a progress keeper in the series I just used one of these simple uh, little safety pin there you can see it these are one of those kind of safety pin stitch markers that have a little they can be snapped in and out you can use them as a stitch marker or as a progress keeper I use this and this is to be able to determine the front from the back because until you get this pattern established because it is in garter stitch it's just to remind you which is the right side and which is the wrong side and then you will need stitch markers and you will need I believe it's 16 or 17 stitch markers now stitch markers you can buy in the mentioned stores that I've already mentioned before and they come in the form of these little plastic rings and they're under a dollar for a whole package of them they're they're relatively cheap if you can't find those you can also look in the um, jewelry section jewelry making section of those stores and these are actually some of my favorite stitch markers and they're actually little jewelry jump hoops and they come in different colors and I actually like them because they're in different colors because I will use the different colors to mark different pattern sections which is what stitch markers are for um, and they're going to be used in this pattern because we're going to be doing cable stitches all the way around and it marks the beginning and end of the cable that you're working on it just makes it a little bit easier to keep your place when you're knitting and that is about what all you're going to need. If you don't have stitch markers, you can use paper clips. Those will work. Um, not the real big ones, but the little paper clips. Those will work. I've used small rubber bands before. I just slipped those on. They're not ideal, but in a pinch, they will work. You can use safety pins. Um, you can even take a piece of yarn in a different color from what you're working on and tie it in a loop tie it in a loop and use it as a stitch marker if you really need to. So, all of this being said, we're going to get started on our series. Stay tuned for lesson two.